Hi. Uh, my kids, Ivri and David, just to see to say that these two are my biggest projects, and I have another one, as you can see, coming up next. And here are my parents. I grew up in a house where we have a lot of uh, financial difficulties, but actually I think that the biggest thing my parents did for me that they never cut my wings and they allowed me to be who I, who I am. And I want to start with my first baby, outside baby, is Crembo Wings, Confidential Crembo. When I was 11 and a half, I started to volunteer with uh, Kfir, a kid that really changed my life and passed away 14 years ago. He was 11 and a half when he passed away. And uh, because of him, I started Crembo Wings, a youth movement for children with and without special needs. Today, operating uh, 87 branches in the country with more than uh, 7,500 uh, kids and teenagers and creating a place and meaning for everyone. And it's really not about with and without special needs. We all have special needs. I cannot cook anything. I have the worst sense of direction in the world. I don't know how to calculate anything. We all have special needs. It's about seeing a person and seeing what he's capable of and understanding that diversity is an asset and not a burden. And uh, thanks. So after Crumble Wings, I, uh, I decided that I want to do it in the formal education system. So four years ago, I started uh, a school network of inclusive uh, schools. Uh, and, um, and I don't have time, but I would say that uh, our inclusive school network is really creating uh, communities communities of kindness where every kid is belong, no one is left behind and it's not about uh, segregation and not about integration, it's really about inclusion and coming up with uh, those sunglasses, understanding that everyone is belong and everyone is unique and, um, and I don't have time but uh, we have, uh, <laughs> we have, wait, wait, because I need to talk about Zikaron Barcelona as well. So I'm, I'm going to quickly jump and say that uh, today we operate, um, uh, hopefully in September 1st, we're going to open if there won't be a strike. But we have uh, 10 schools with eight kindergarten and one high school with 4,257 kids. And... I hope that all schools in the country and abroad will be inclusive schools because I feel that this is the way education should be and we should not put any kid aside regardless of his diagnostic or background because every, every kid is special and every, there is no kid, we cannot create society when there are some kids that are not belong. So I, I hope we can get to every kid. Um, okay, I have a minute and a half. Okay. So. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay, so I have no uh, connection. Let's talk about the Holocaust. We haven't spoke about it for a while. So I have no one in my family who was in the Holocaust. Uh, but what happened 10 years ago during the Holocaust Remembrance Day that I forgot is the Holocaust Remembrance Day. And in Israel, I know some of you here are from Israel. You have, you know, everything is around it that day. So I was talking to my mom and she asked me, what is your plans? And I told her that I have no plans. So I came with her to the formal uh, ceremony of the Tel Aviv municipality. And I saw that I'm the only one under the age of 60 in the crowd. So I was asking, where is everybody? It's the Holocaust Remembrance Day. And um, after the ceremony, uh, understanding that this is the last years that we still have the survivors living among us, and the ceremony was too boring for me, and I felt that this is a historical event that happened back there, and it has no connection to me. I was coming to my car, and then I saw uh, like uh, my friends watching the soccer game that evening. And I was thinking to myself, okay, maybe that's what I need. Maybe I don't need a ceremony. Maybe I need like an intimate gathering for me and my friends in my own living room. And maybe we can 
invite a Holocaust survivor to share her story and we can sing song and we can have an open conversation about uh, what this memory is bringing to our lives today. And I did the first event at my house. I called it Zikaron Basalon. And, um, and uh, I don't know how, but 40 people came. And it was the most meaningful event that I participated in my life. And when the Holocaust survivors that we invited, she shared her story, it felt that she's giving us her story and now it's mine. And it, felt, it was the first time that it didn't feel like a historical event, but a story that is mine. And, and then we shared uh, stories of other families and we sang song and we had a meaningful conversation. And it kind of, it was like a compass and how, of how can we be better people today. We have a million and a half people participating every year in Zikaron Basalon in 65 countries. 36,000 Holocaust survivors this year participated in the events and double second generation and third generation and recorded testimonies. And we have lots of salons happening in Germany and in Poland of children and grandchildren of Nazis who survived, uh, survivors who survived the camp that their parents operated in. And um, Zikon Salon is taking place in different population who never felt connected, who are never watching the Ad Vashem ceremonies at home, that they feel that the story is not, it doesn't belong to them. And I hope that in um, 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now, Zikon Salon will be in a way like Haseder, like Lel Haseder, just without the food and the Haggadah. But we can sit together and share stories and pass them on and ask ourselves what kind of values we can take to our lives today. And uh, thank you. <laughs>